Hello, I'm Philip Quello. I'm an economic historian at Ball State University. Today I'm here to talk about creative destruction. Economists talk a great deal about the term creative destruction. Creative destruction is a centerpiece for modern thinking about how economies evolve. But what is creative destruction? It seems somewhat of an oxymoron. Well, not quite. Creative destruction is an economic principle that an economist, Joseph Schumpeter, observed in 1942. The opening up of new markets, foreign or domestic, the organizational development from the craft shop and factory illustrate the same process of industrial mutation that incessantly revolutionizes the economic structure from within, incessantly destroying the old one, incessantly creating a new one. The process of creative destruction is the essential fact about capitalism. It is what capitalism consists of and what every capitalist concern has got to live in. But what do you mean by that? Step back a second and see if what Schumpeter said over 70 years ago can still be applied today. Take the ice industry in the United States, for example. Ice production has had a very interesting and unique history over the past several hundred years. Today, Americans consume tens of thousands of tons of ice every day. Ice consumption has become a regular part of the American daily life, as ice has hundreds of uses, including keeping food and drinks cold and icing injuries. Ice has not always been this readily available to the average person. Back in the 16th century, wealthy individuals would build personal ice houses on their property, cutting ice from nearby lakes and ponds in the winter months and transporting them to ice houses, storing it for use during the summer months. The commercial ice trade then began around 1800 in the United States. Large-scale ice mining operations sprang up concentrated mostly in New England. These ice producers transported ice throughout the United States and much of the Caribbean. By 1818, ice was fetching nearly 25 cents per pound in the United States. That seems kind of affordable, 25 cents per pound. Well, compare that with what ice costs today. Ice currently costs about 10 cents per pound, even though we have seen inflation approximately 1,800% since then. The average income per capita in the United States in 1818 was $1,919 per year. Comparing that with the United States today, it is $49,965. What does it mean? Well, if we look at the price of ice as a percentage of income today compared to 1818, we found that one pound of ice took more than 65 times more income in 1818 than it does today. That is, if you buy ice commercially, in home ice production is even cheaper. This means that in 1800s, ice could only be afforded by the wealthiest of individuals, and even then only in a limited capacity. Well, now that we've established how much cheaper ice is than it was 200 years ago, let's look at how many people are employed in the industry over the years. In 1914, near the height of the commercial ice industry, there were more than 2,500 companies producing ice, employing approximately 30,000 Americans. Then in 1950, the automatic ice maker was developed. By 1965, its use was widespread throughout the United States. This innovation dramatically changed ice production in the commercial ice industry. Today, the ice industry is vastly different. The majority of ice is now being produced by personally owned ice makers. With the onset of home ice makers, thousands of ice workers lost their jobs. Today, there are about 500 commercial ice producers that employ just over 7,000 workers. That is more than a 75% decrease in employment in the ice industry from 1914 to today. This is creative destruction on full display in the modern day. The massive ice industry of the early 1900s was replaced through innovation, and now we enjoy a much higher standard of living because of it, consuming more ice at a lower price and a higher quality than we ever have had before. Even though thousands of jobs are lost in the process, society as a whole has been made better off. Schumpeter knew that at times the process of creative destruction in our society would be painful, especially in the short run. Creative destruction occurs in all kinds of industries today. Some individuals might be made worse off, not just in the short term, but perhaps throughout their lives. But he also knew that without creative destruction, that our economies would stagnate and we would never experience the growth and higher living standards that this process enables.